Thank you. Welcome for all being here. Um, if, I guess we have a few chairs around the edges if uh, people want to, if we've run out of some space and people are welcome to, to sit here. Um, I'm Mark Johnson, the Director of the Advanced Manufacturing Office in the Department of Energy. Thank you all for coming here today. And first of all, I want to uh, give a, a thanks to ASME and, uh, and the Manufacturing Caucus for organizing this today, the, the meeting where we're sitting here. Is my speaker actually on? It is. It's okay, yeah. good. Oh, that went off. Now it's on. Okay. So um, to give you an overview of some of the work we're doing in advanced manufacturing in the Department of Energy in, and uh, introduce you to a few of our partners that have done some work and really um, get beyond us talking about what we do and let's hear what they work on. Um, what we're going to wind up doing is about, uh, about an hour and a half here and go until 1130. I'm going to give a quick overview on the Advanced Manufacturing Office and then give each one of our, uh, our visitors here today uh, to, uh, you know, sort of five to ten minutes to talk about uh, each what they do and some of their work with the Advanced Manufacturing Office. We'll open it up. I'll have some questions myself, and we'll get a little bit of a dialogue going, and then we can open up some questions from the audience as well. So thank you all, first of all, for, for joining us. Um, starting out, we've got a little slides here over on the side. So as said, talking about innovation in manufacturing and energy. So first of all, what is manufacturing innovation? Really have two big elements of it. One is how do we advance the technology? So bringing our scientific A game to the to to play in this. And then the second is making sure we've got people in action that can take action on those innovations in manufacturing. So that's learning, that's workforce development, dissemination of knowledge. That's the heart of where we get to manufacturing innovation. In the Advanced Manufacturing Office, we work at this intersection between manufacturing and energy, right? And it's developing a science and technology for it. First question is why? There's really been a triple bottom line around this problem. <coughs> You're looking around, first of all, issues of, of the economy. How do we take the great science and technology advances that we have in the United States, our national lab system, our university system, our small businesses, our large business research groups, and wind up translating that and working with them so they translate the scientific advances into economic impact? It's great for growth in the economy. Second area is in security. We've got an abundance of energy resources in the, and diversity of energy resources in the United States, how do we most effectively tie those resources in so we can have the most competitive manufacturing sector out there as possible? That often takes technology, it takes information, it takes knowledge, it takes that technological gap that goes from discovery to implementation. And then the third area, if we do that, is actually being responsible stewards of the environment around us, having clean air, clean water. So. Let's talk about manufacturing in the United States and take this back a little bit. Most people don't actually recognize this, that the U.S. Revolution, the American Revolution, and the Industrial Revolution basically started at the same time. You know, 1775, you had Lexington Concord, and you had James Watt incorporating his first company on this patent about a steam regulator to make steam engines more effective. And that really kicked things off. What's well, interesting, right after the U.S. Revolution and in, the, uh, in our first Congress, uh, we had our first Treasury Secretary, and Congress asked Alexander Hamilton to say three things. One is, do we issue currency? Second is, how do we repay the debt from our, of, our, of our War of Independence? But the third question they asked him to look at was, how do we deal with this new thing called manufacturing? And so he spent a year doing an analysis across the, the, the 13 states and saying, how do we deal with manufacturing? A <coughs> couple of things to note on this. First of all, for those of you who, are, who work here in Congress, who work in the administration, Congress for 225 years has been asking for reports to Congress from us, and we've been doing studies and delivering reports to Congress. So um, that's, that's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting long history we get to do on that. <coughs> uh, but the second is what he wound up drawing is actual conclusions on this. First of all, is manufacturing is in interest of all parts of the country? not just in the areas where you're doing manufacturing, but actually everywhere, for both the independence and the security as well as the economy of the nation. So that triple bottom line existed then. And as a result of that, it was in the interest of the nation to wind up supporting the advancement of manufacturing. So this is something that's been going on for 225 years. We went from that into our Industrial Revolution. You wound up 
at the end of the first industrial revolution having things like natural gas lighting towns. That picture on the left, it's hard to see that, but they're celebrating the opening of 31 factories in Finley, Ohio based on town gas that they wound up having to light their city. Um, you had the original DuPont fact chemical factories on the Delaware River, and you also had the emergence of cities. What you don't see is that you had this huge problem of the what they called the manure crisis that was happening at the time because obviously horses were the solution. That brought rise to the second industrial revolution. We wound up having electrification. We wound up having process scale up and really using energy resources more effectively and going to things like the Carnegie Mills. And then the third was the development of standardization in the assembly line. And this is the direction we wound up going where we wound up the rise of our automotive industry, our electrical industry, our chemicals, our steel industry that we have today. And that brings us up to today where we are. If you look at where energy is used in manufacturing, about two-thirds of all energy go in manufacturing goes into a handful of industrial sectors, chemicals, petroleum, primary metals, iron and steel, you're looking at food processing. By dealing with technology innovation in these spaces, we wind up getting technology innovation across the, um, the, the industrial sector. And as a result of that, we wind up using energy more effectively. That winds up giving us a low-cost pathway. But a big change has happened over the last, you know, at the end of the 20th century, the beginning of the 21st century. We've gone from that second industrial revolution to a third industrial revolution, where you have the advancement of computer technologies, communication technologies, supercomputers, automation. What's interesting about this, if you go to each one of those industrial sectors, and we've got some uh, represented from Larry here today, what you find as their highest technological priorities for development is things like advanced intelligence and process control, smart manufacturing, additive manufacturing, automation. How do we bring those advances in the third industrial revolution to make sure that we are as competitive as possible here in the United States? We went through a process over the last couple of years through our quadrennial technology review and multi-year program plan to identify these cross-cutting technology areas that cut across industry sectors that have out outweighed impact in the manufacturing sector relevant to energy. And this ranges for things like smart manufacturing, <coughs> new, accelerating new materials discovery, new process technologies, lightweight materials technology, extreme materials technologies that can wind up giving you new capabilities in manufacturing. What's interesting when you think about um, adding technology, the first thing that often comes to people's mind is they say, yeah, we become more productive, but what about the jobs? Well, if you look at the manufacturing sector overall, for every job in manufacturing, this is the entire manufacturing sector, you have 0.8 jobs directly created servicing that job outside of the manufacturing sector. For the advanced technology sectors where we're bringing our science and technology advantage to, to bear, you have about 2.2 jobs created outside the manufacturing sector. And in the energy space, you have about three and a half jobs created. So these are the highest multiplier factor where you wind up saying, by driving that productivity, we actually get overall job growth that winds up happening. So that's why we want to connect our national labs, our universities, our small businesses to these industries and really move that state of technology forward as fast as possible because these become great jobs. You also look at the differential in pay. I'm sorry, you can't really see this. You're wel welcome to take a look at this. Uh, at later we can circulate this to PDF. Um, at all income ranges, you have outside, outweighted pay in advanced sectors relative to overall sectors. You also look at how the U.S. manufacturer performs. And with the exception of Norway, which is a relatively small economy, the U.S. is the highest productivity manufacturers and em per employee in the world. We have incredibly productive workers in the United States. We wind up using what is, is really great about what we have in terms of science and technology to make sure our workers have the best advantage out there and the best jobs. And it's still, if you look at regional economic strategies out there across the country, this is still impacting not just little clusters of places, but this regionalism at the state and local level, they're identifying all across the country the need for this advanced technology area. The way we wind up working with the, the Advanced Manufacturing Office, we have three distinct modes of funding things. We support 
in all cases, these are merit-based uh, peer-reviewed programs. We have uh, R and individual R&D projects, everything from small business projects to open innovation calls. We wind up supporting um, R&D consortia or facilities around our national labs, around universities. We're having comp multiple companies come together across the supply chain. We actually get further faster together in terms of the R&D on it. And then the third area is in technical, industrial technical assistance. This is where something's been invented and we need to be able to promote that idea and share information. So workforce development, knowledge transfer, and our industrial assessment centers, things like that. Uh, here's a, a, a snapshot of some of the programs we wind up running. We have things like through our Manufacturing USA program, we have Power America, the Institute for Advanced Composites, the Smart Manufacturing Institute, our Pro Chemical Process Intensification Institute, and the Remade uh, Sustainable Materials Institute. In the lower left, we have uh, 28 <coughs> industrial assessment centers around the country. We have our Better Plants and Superior Energy Performance Partnerships for uh, companies in terms of their setting targets relative to their energy efficiency goals. Working with our national labs, we have our High Performance Computing for Manufacturing Program, the uh, Critical Materials Institute looking at rare earth minerals, our manufacturing demonstration facility really pushing state of the art on some of the additive work, and then our, our lab embedded entrepreneurship programs where you have Cyclotron Road, uh, Innovation Crossroads, and Chain Reaction Innovation. So with that, what does success look like is we're not just inventing these energy technologies here, but we're actually manufacturing them here.